Hi, I'm Sarah Sekhon of Standard & Poor's Global Fixed Income Research. In emerging markets, we expect $692 billion US dollars worth of rated financial and non-financial corporate debt to mature between 2015 and 2020. Emerging Asia accounts for 46% of the maturing debt, Latin America accounts for 32%, and EMEA for 22%. While investment-grade entities make up about half of the outstanding ratings in emerging markets, they are 73% of the total debt maturing through 2020. They account for 83% of the maturities in the financial sector and 62% in the non-financial sector. Since investment-grade companies are more creditworthy than their speculative-grade peers, the large proportion of investment-grade debt maturities may help reduce refinancing risk. It is important to note that the 692 billion US dollars in debt is rated by Standard & Poor's, which is a small percentage of the overall debt outstanding in emerging markets. There may be additional debt maturing in the next five years that will compete with the available refinancing resources. We believe issuers in emerging markets face risks of subpar economic growth, continued low commodity prices, depreciating currencies, and the imminent rate hike by the Fed. Over the past few years, emerging markets corporate were successful in raising debt because investors wanted to diversify their portfolios given the weak economic recovery and lower yields in the developed markets. Many emerging market issuers tapped foreign bond markets and issued debt in foreign currencies. As a result, a large proportion of debt maturing through 2020 is in US dollars and euros. While this was attractive for emerging market companies, it led to an increased foreign exchange risk. The US dollar has strengthened significantly against a number of emerging market currencies, posing a risk to debt service and refinancing in dollars if local currencies remain suppressed for long periods. The Chinese central bank recently allowed its currency to depreciate against the dollar. While such a move will be beneficial for Chinese exporters, it puts pressure on companies with revenues in local currency and debt maturities in US dollars. Chinese companies account for 733 billion of US dollars debt maturing through 2020. Moreover, if other emerging markets follow China's lead in weakening their currencies, debt service or maturities may become a challenge for companies at the lower end of the rating spectrum. In 2013, the taper tantrum affected the emerging markets via capital outflows, depreciating currencies, and higher interest rates as investors became concerned about the timing and impact of the end of quantitative easing in the US. While these risks have abated, any resurgence may hurt refinancing prospects. If the Fed starts tightening later this year, funding costs for companies looking to refinance may increase. Softer economic growth and lower commodity prices pose additional challenges for emerging market issuers. While the economic growth in the U.S. has improved, Europe continues to struggle and Chinese growth has softened. As a result, emerging market issuers that export to these regions see the impact of sluggish growth via lower revenues and weaker liquidity. The benefits of lower commodity prices to certain emerging markets is offset by lower export revenue for commodity exporting emerging countries. About one-fourth of the emerging markets rated debt maturing between 2015 and 2020 is from commodity-linked sectors, oil and gas, metal minings and steel, forest products and building materials, and chemicals, packaging and environmental services. This poses refinancing risks especially for issuers with lower speculative grade ratings. For more information on the upcoming maturities in the emerging markets in Asia, EMEA, and Latin America, please read our recently published Emerging Market Refinancing Study. This has been Credit Matters. Thanks for watching.